coming up. I was terrified. I thought, you know, what is happening to me? I want to die. Not able to pull myself out of this, what felt like a black hole that was pulling me down under. The Whirlpool of Depression, next on Main Street. Welcome to On Main Street. I'm Dale Meyer. Depression is the most common form of emotional pain. One in five of us will fall victim. It hits all ages, all races, all economic groups, and both genders. On Main Street correspondent Brian Ward reports on one woman's plunge into the whirlpool of depression. Bonnie Keene was riding the waves of success, singing around the world as part of the trio, First Call. The group's 12 recordings earned five Grammy nominations, 11 Dove nominations, and three Dove Awards. They appeared on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and two times the group was presented the Dove Awards Group of the Year. Her career was soaring, but her personal life began falling apart. Bonnie and her husband were in marriage counseling when she discovered he was seeing another woman. It was about eight months into a intense counseling, and I thought things were getting better, that I discovered that it wasn't just uh, even a, a slip up or a one night stand. This was a woman he truly thought was the answer to his life. Bonnie divorced and soon found betrayal and infidelity invading the band as well. When I was on a Michael English tour, first call, many people might know that uh, the third member of our group began to have an affair with Michael and it broke apart both his marriage and hers. It was a, quite a nightmare for me because I had seen my marriage fall apart over those issues. And the night that Mirabeth shared with us what was really happening, I left that meeting and went home and was utterly devastated. I, I remember I could barely speak because I was just racked with fear and pain and grief, and it was like a replay of things that I had had happen in my life. It was backstage after the concerts where Bonnie's world would come crashing down. Away from the bright lights and center stage, she would let her emotions flow like a river of tears onto the backstage floor. I was on a huge tour where I had to sing in front of about 15 to 18,000 people a night. And I had been so trained to get on stage and do that that I would get up and sing, I'd be all right, then I would sit down and just cry the rest of the night. And I was awake for almost two weeks. I finally hit a real wall in my life. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I was just very depleted. I was, um, I was crying all the time. Her husband was gone, her band was in chaos. She was now a single parent. Her life had become a whirlpool spiraling down toward despair. And she began to realize the depression was more than she could handle. When that was going on, were you aware that something was up or? I knew something really bad was happening because I had not experienced this before. I had had periods of time where um, I tend to lose weight or just, you know, under eat when I'm stressed. But I knew that I was in big trouble because I was crying. I was walking through the grocery store, just a basket case, you know, crying all the time and not able to pull myself out of this, what felt like a black hole that was pulling me down under. There's this sucking under, there's this, this tide of water almost that was pulling me under and I didn't know how to get out of it. I was terrified. I thought, you know, what is happening to me? I want to die. Joining us now is the woman Brian was telling us about, Bonnie Keene. She's written about her struggles in the book, Blessed are the desperate, for they will find hope. Bonnie, thanks so much for being here. Let me begin with a very fundamental question. I uh, am a fan of the Chicago White Sox. Okay. They lose a game. I say I'm depressed. We're talking about something. No. No, you're not. <laughs> what, is, what is depression? You're just a little bummed out that they lost the game. Um, 
Depression is something I never would have understood have, if I hadn't gone through it. Uh, there are many different levels of it, but the depression that I went through was clinical depression. Um, was really like, uh, my doctor likens it to the flu or diabetes. He said if you had diabetes, you would have to take an insulin shot or you'd go into a coma. When you get into a clinical state of depression, if you don't do something on m many different levels, um, you can really feel suicidal, uh, give up hope. You can't see the joy in the simple things in your life anymore, your children, your you know, work, and you really you feel just, like you're going to die. You just vegetate. You, you, I don't think a ball game makes you feel like you're going to die, but uh, sometimes maybe Sometimes my White Sox do. Yeah. No. Uh, is it an illness? Well, yes, I think it is. It is an illness, and it's something that I rankled against for a while because I didn't want to think of myself as having that kind of weakness. And... Um, I, I believe it's rampant. It, it, it's like you said earlier, it's everywhere. It's one out of five. And in one our culture five. especially, I think it's rampant right now. And women especially seem to deal with it. And you think, oh, you know, I can be strong enough, I can pull myself out of it. And then when you find that you can't. Well, let's um, talk about some of the symptoms. And, okay. and before we went on the air, we talked about a number of warning signs of depression. And there were some that you said, whoa, yeah, that, that really oh, is something I could many. talk about. One is irritability. And then you said appetite changes. Oh, yes. Comment on that. Um, I completely lost my appetite when I went through depression. And I lost so much weight, I, I couldn't sleep. So insomnia was another one of the, one of the uh, effects. Insomnia keeps you awake to try to feed your body, but your body doesn't get fed, so it stays awake. And it creates a cycle that chemically puts your body into a state of spiraling down. When sleep loss, uh, messes up your brain and messes up your thought processes, which makes you feel despair, which makes you feel hopeless. And it really creates a cycle that depletes your body so much physically and emotionally that it's very hard to come back to ground zero. It's, with. A, it's a whirlpool. It is a whirlpool. And, and that That's leads, a great way to put it. That leads to another sign fatigue, fatigue, massive. boredom, yes. decreased sexual drive. Concentration and memory. Did you experience problems with that? Yes. I just. Um, I, I am a very focused overachiever type A personality and all of a sudden I found myself just thinking about having to get my kids ready for school or to walk to the kitchen to make a meal was overwhelming. Say and that I, again, to, to walk to the kitchen? Yeah. So what did you do? Just sit there? Well, actually I, I, I made it through a national tour and then I, I called my my preacher, my pastor, my doctor, everybody, my family I could think of and I said, I cannot, you know, Miss Superwoman here. I have hit a wall. I can't function now. I can't even the, get out of bed, really. All the, okay, with all these warning signs, I mean, you were just there. You were vegetating. I was vegetating, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, concentration memory were shot. Yes. Did you cry? That's another Basket sign. case. <laughs> I was, yes. I cried all the time. I mean, nothing in particular. I was just crying all the time. Everything felt like loss. Everything felt like there was no hope. Everything felt like despair. And I was, my daughter literally looked at me and she said, Mother, are you dying? I said, no, I'm not dying. She said, you act like you are. I said, no, I, I, I'm not dying. It's like when you get the flu, I, my emotions have the flu. Uh, my heart is sick right now, and so I need to get help with that. But um, I really could not, I couldn't function normally at all. And it scared me to death. It's one, frightening. And this is one out of five of us <laughs> that have these, uh, that has depression. Hopelessness, you've talked about that, hopelessness and worthlessness. And the last warning sign of depression, thoughts of suicide and death. Did you have that? Yes. Uh, for, for weeks at a time, I would think, I really don't want to live anymore. Now, I have two little children. I was a single mother, and they're watching my every move. And I'd, ha I'd been a single parent for quite a few years. And if I hadn't had my kids watching me, I, don't, I never wanted to take my life as in take a lot of pills or do something, but I just wanted to just not be alive anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was a person of faith. I've always been a person of great faith. And I thought, I think I know I'm going to heaven someday, and I know that's coming, so I'd like to just go now. Okay. Now, if some of these uh, warning signs of depression have gotten your attention, we want to go on and debunk some myths of depression. Bonnie mentioned before that you get some ideas that you can easily get rid of depression, and that's not so. You can learn more about that from our booklet, Dealing with Depression. If you give us a call at 1-800-876-9880, we'll send you this book, which could be 
I hope it will be a tremendous help uh, to you. Let's talk about some myths of depression. The first myth is that this is a character flaw. Yes, yes. You know, you think there's something very wrong with me and I'm very ashamed to tell anyone. So um, this must be something terribly, terribly sick about me. I must be mentally crazy. And the truth of it is it can be a chemical imbalance. It can be something in your genetic background. It can be brought on by losses, divorce, work, uh, a loss of a child, uh, anything that, that just nosedives you in life or pulls the rug out from under you. If you, if you thought about it logically, clear-headed, you would say, hey, I mean, if I lost a child, my marriage uh, fell apart, whatever, it makes sense. Yes. But when you're in that situation, you think, oh, there's something There's something terribly, terribly wrong, wrong and I'm so me. scared somebody will think there's something wrong. My, my own family said, you know, snap out of it. Okay, well, and, and it's a sign of weakness. This is another myth. Depression is a sign of no, weakness. it is not a sign of weakness. Poor mom, she's so weak, she just can't live life. Right, right. See, I have a personal theory that we live in a culture that throws too much at us too quickly and too fast, and certain people are sponges. I'm a sponge, I take things in, like the nightly yeah. news. CNN, I mean, we can watch so much information in one day's time about devastation in our world. I think sometimes we you weren't emotionally wired to handle that. Let, I wa I'm not. Let me ask you two other myths quickly. Depression can be toughed out. No. Not handy. You know no. that from experience. No white knuckles. And the last one, depression can be beaten by self-will. No way. Quick comment on that. No, I mean, you can try all you want, and uh, I tried very, very hard to will myself to get better, and I just got worse and worse and worse until I did get some help. And by the way, your brochure is one of the best things I've ever read about depression. This is an awesome brochure. I highly encourage anyone to call in to get this. Thank you. I, 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 <laughs> I was blown away by it. I yeah, really we did not ask you to no, say that. No, I just had to throw it in while I could. We, we just uh, we sent you a copy beforehand, yes. so you knew about it. So you want to give us a call again to get this uh, brochure, Dealing with Depression. When we come back, we're going to talk about how you can get out of that whirlpool of depression. Please stay with us. You thought, you know, why can't I hold myself up by my bootstraps here and, and, and go on? And when you can't do that, it's frightening. The big step first is to say, I, I need help. And uh, I was one of those people who thought I could do everything. Don't be afraid to reach out. You need emotional support at that time. You need uh, medical support. You need spiritual support. Do you realize that one in five people will become a victim of depression? You can learn how to recognize the illness and how to fight it in our free booklet, Dealing with Depression. To get one, call us now at 1-800-876-9880. Ask for offer number 0014. Everyone needs help now and then to make sense out of the tough issues of life. Now you can get a free catalog of all available on Main Street shows by calling 1-800-876-9880. Choose from program topics in areas of family and personal relationships, life issues, and spiritual needs. Plus, each videotape comes with additional printed information about the topic. Just call 1-800-876-9880 for a complete video catalog. That's Planet Micro? Tough game. My dad showed me. Your dad? Oh, yeah. He loves it. He said we have something in common. We hang out all the time now. He tells me secrets. I tell him secrets. Really? Cool. Having an open line of communication is beneficial for your kids and you. Find out what you and your children have in common. Talk, listen, communicate now. A message from your friends at Lutheran Hour Ministries. I'm going to see if me and my dad have something in common. Me too. You can be my voice. You can stop child abuse. You can make the call. 1-800-4-CHILD. If you know about or suspect child abuse, please call. It's anonymous and free. 1-800-4-CHILD helps abuse children and their families every day. You can stop child abuse or you can let it happen. You make the call. Wouldn't it be great if we went through life without any problems? Well, that's just not the way things are. Life can get tough for each and every one of us, but we can face whatever comes along with peace and confidence because there is reason for hope. We're your neighbors. 
the people of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And we'd like you to know that with Christ, there's plenty of hope to go around. You see me with sports legends all the time. You can name a dozen superstars just like that. Name this hero. He's the greatest African-American leader of the 19th century and the first to receive a vote for a presidential nomination in 1888. He advised Abraham Lincoln and other presidents for 25 years. He said all people need to get an education to get ahead. Frederick Douglass, a champion of equality, a real hero. Recognize the present, although it is not always pleasant. For if you turn your back, stability you will lack. For the present is not always a choice. It's here and it has a voice. The present you have to face and you have to embrace. Through all the suffering and all the pain, a stronger heart is what you will gain. You will find your courage from heaven above and you will find to live and love in the present. My daughter Courtney wrote that. She's 16 now. She wrote that probably when she was 12. I saw that Courtney was dealing with the present in a way that was real and she knew that it hurt but she was embracing it and hopefully seeing that I was embracing and moving it on through it. Welcome back to On Main Street. I'm Dale Meyer. We're discussing ways to escape the whirlpool of depression. Telling us how is singer, songwriter Bonnie Keene. Bonnie tells her story in the book, Blessed are the desperate for they will find hope. Bonnie, in your book you talk about BCP. Basket case potential. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> That's me. Um, I, I think I, I finally learned to embrace the fact that I, I have a lot of potential to just fall apart if I'm given too much information about things that would really grieve my heart or if I don't learn to reach out for help uh, and try to take things on myself that I can really turn into a basket case. You said so. earlier that uh, you, you came to the point to realize that you could not beat this on your own. Yes, I did. So we want to talk about that now. Um, support system, friends. Yes. How did it happen for you? Well, I went to see my pastor first, and he's a very wise man. He said, um, I'm going to pray with you. You're a person of great faith. But he said, I want you to go see a doctor immediately because you need help physically. Uh, you need help with your chemistry in your body. He said you need to tell your family and your friends that you trust to come in and help you right now because it's like you, you really can't do this yourself. Well, and how did you take that when, when somebody says oh. you need help? Isn't that kind of like great relief. blows your ego away? It was good? Well, for me it was a great relief because I knew at this point I was terrified because I wasn't able to for the first time in my life I wasn't able to handle this. So I did tell some of my best friends and they were very knowledgeable. Some of them had family members that were in uh, had gone through something similar or knew about it. I found a great aunt of mine had been through depression uh, in the 40s and all she had had at that point were vitamin B12 shots. Great woman that I admired and she reached out to me and said, you know, you go to your doctor and you listen to everybody that talks to you and you do what they say. Were you surprised by the support then that you got from friends and family? Um, yeah, well, some of them I wasn't surprised by. Others, my family was, was quite thrown. You know, they were already worried about me being a single mom and everything and they were just like, can't you just feel better? And I said, no, I can't just feel better. It's a myth, one of the yes, myths. Yes, it's yeah. a myth. And uh, they have watched me struggle with it and, and deal with it and understand it now more. So um, I, I was really relieved to hear, too, a, a pastor or somebody that I respected and my doctor say, you know, this is not something, Bonnie, you can just wish it would just go away. So we're getting If you don't stay in touch with me, you're going to lose it. Yeah, so that's the, that was the first glimmer of hope. Yes. You talk about the importance of making a list. How does yeah. that help? Well, one of the, I journal a lot, so my book is taken meaning. from my journaling. Uh, every day I sit down and write about what's going on in like my life. Like a diary. Like a diary. I've done it since I was a little girl, and Blessed Are the Desperate is based on my journals. Um, I would sit down and say, okay, what do I have today to be grateful for? Because I could only see past a few hours at a time sometimes. And I would list the things that were the high points in my life, the births of my children, or the first time I saw the, the waters of the Caribbean, or simple things and then I got down to where I, I began to see holy ground and, and special moments like just being okay <laughs> having my kids come home from school I'm all right we're here we're healthy we're fine. Did you go back then and look at how you were a year ago or two years yeah, ago and say wow yeah. I really have progressed. I've, yes I've come somewhere from where I was. Something else that caught me in, in reading your book is the talk uh, you, you talked about 
forgiveness and unforgiveness oh, yes. and moving on. And, and I'm not sure that I understand that, so That was a tremendous part for me. About depression. How does that all well, fit Depression in? can be anger, anger turned into yourself. And for me, I think uh, my divorce, had, I had still had wounds from that, and I needed to walk in forgiveness with my ex-husband and with his wife, and I needed to forgive myself for how I might have failed them. No matter what brings you to the, to the steps of a divorce, you always carry some shame and guilt. And forgiveness is a great key to unlocking that. Okay, so let, let, you, you wanted to forgive your ex, but let's start with you yourself. Yeah. You said you had to forgive yourself. How did that come to pass? Well, I started realizing that I had been forgiven a great deal. And as a person of faith, I believe that Christ forgave everyone for everything. And so I thought, you know, if he forgave everyone, including Judas, who was sitting at the table with him and he was going to betray him in a few hours, and Jesus washed everybody's feet. He didn't stop when he got to Judas' feet. He washed his feet along with everyone else's. And I thought, I have no right to harbor unforgiveness against myself or anyone else. So this meant then, as you're struggling with depression, getting out of this whirlpool, you kind of knew it's 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 okay. I'm okay because of the forgiveness. Yes. And then you and were able you were life. able to move on. What kind of spiritual medicine, if we could call it that, helped you? What were the? I mean, okay. So you talk about forgiveness, but what medicine do you take? What what did you do to grow in this as you worked Spiritually? yourself? Spiritually. Yeah, spiritual medicine. Okay, spiritual medicine for me was really reading everything I could find, uh, the Psalms. Job. There are many things in the Bible that I think God allowed to stay in the Bible that speak about depression. Christ suffered depression. I mean, and on the cross, He said, "Where is you know God? Why have you forsaken me?" He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. I be, I realized that Christ reached out to women when He was on earth that were just a, a mess. They were wretched. Their lives were a mess. I began to see great hope in those stories of Christ's humanity and divinity. I read books like The Gospel According to Job by Mike Mason. Um, had you do this almost every day? Every or day. I had part a stack of, of therapy. books. I had a stack of books beside my bed that I read. And as while I took medication physically and all that, I also just studied okay, and every Talking day about find. books, you said that our, our booklet this dealing with awesome. depression. It is awesome. All right, give us a call at 1 800 876 9880. And you can get this book that is well endorsed by Bonnie Keene. The great thing is you don't have to be alone. And I'm going to talk about that when we return. My son was about six years old. And he saw his mom shaking, crying. And my son didn't know what to do, so he went upstairs and got all he had in his piggy bank, which is 49 cents. And he brought that down to me because that was his way of saying, I want to give you everything I can. God restored to me hope again, 49 cents at a time. It didn't come overnight and it didn't come all at once. And I, I, I'm trying to live with that on those days, especially when I feel like I'm not enough. God is always enough. Depression, an emotional state of dejection and sadness, strikes women and men of all ages, races, and lifestyles. If you're suffering, this insightful free booklet dealing with depression can help you learn how to fight it. Call us now at 1-800-876-9880. Ask for offer number 0014. Everyone needs help now and then to make sense out of the tough issues of life. Now you can get a free catalog of all available on Main Street shows by calling 1-800-876-9880. Choose from program topics in areas of family and personal relationships, life issues, and spiritual needs. Plus, each videotape comes with additional printed information about the topic. Just call 1-800-876-9880 for a complete video catalog. Good morning. Hi, Dad. Where's Carrie? Doing some last minute studying. So, how is she adjusting to high school? Just fine. Oh. She's making new friends. And I think she has a boyfriend. Her attitude has changed towards school. I told you things would work out. When parents and kids don't know how to talk to each other, they're both left clueless. Recognize the signs of trouble. Hey. Talk, listen, communicate now from your friends at Lutheran Hour Ministries. Guess our little girl's growing up. We know we can count on you to do what Smokey says. Smokey says. Only you. No, you don't play with matches. That's not cool. Tell mom and dad to break them. Stop them. Yeah, yeah. And when your folks desire to build a fire, ha, ha, 
clear brush and branches away. And keep water nearby like you ought to. Yeah, some would say otter. Only you can prevent forest fires. I need you to help me. But I won't ask you. And I can't tell you what's going on. I'll tell you a secret. If you don't call, I won't get any better. If you do call, it will help me. If you think a child you know is being abused, please call 1-800-4-A-CHILD. I just need you. Exercised lately. Log on to our website for more information about On Main Street and the topics we examine on this program. Visit us at www.onmainstreet.org. Bonnie Keene wrote about a time when her son Graham was struggling with some problems. Problems that we adults might think were petty, but they were big in young Graham's eyes. The situation turned out okay. Mommy, Graham said, I prayed to Jesus and he told me everything was all right. So, he said, all of my dreams hop back in my heart. Are you, or someone you know, caught in the whirlpool of depression? The purpose of our program is to have dreams hop back into your heart. I can't put hope in your heart, but I can point you to the one who does. That's God, your Father and the Father of Jesus Christ. When God's Son Jesus had died on the cross for you and for me, the Father brought Jesus back to life again. Now, if he can give new life to a dead man, you can be sure that God can reach to you and make dreams hop back into your heart. Thanks to Bonnie Keene, we'll leave you with a clip of Bonnie singing Isaac from her latest CD, Marked for Life. See you next time. Depression is an illness. Dealing with depression has valuable tips to help you beat the whirlpool of depression, such as turning to God for spiritual medicine to complement what your doctor prescribes. Call us now at 1-800-876-9880 for this free booklet. Ask for offer number 0014. Each other.